So Don, this is the, um, the new siphon system. It's, um, everything is built into the one stainless steel manifold, so the non-return valves, control systems, the vacuum pump, it's a standalone kit now. So you pretty much just need to have that, connect up your pipes to the beginning point and the end point, and that's it, it flows completely. And now's the cycle, it's running a cycle, so at the moment what it's doing is it's pushing the air out the top, and in a moment it'll stop, and then it's going to exchange the air for the water. And that's now the exchange cycle, so the water that's in here is dropping down, and the air that's in here is going up. So it is literally like, you know, inhale, exhale. And it's, um, it takes it to a really high pressure. This can, this can take to 98% vacuum, which is actually around about over 9 metres of head. Right. Which is really extreme. Very good, very high performance, but it's not a big volume. So this will just run cycles continuously until it's got rid of all of the water. When the water level gets up to here, it'll stop, it'll be happy. Yeah. So if you ever lose water in your system, it'll just reprime, start all over again. And it's just using, the volume of water you see squirting out is the only amount of water it's using. There's no water using for spinning parts or anything. It's just that much water. So we've, as I said, everything's built into the manifold now, including a valve here. The reason we've chosen to have a butterfly valve on a long wheel like this, a gearbox, because when it's running, you know, five tons of water doing three meters a second, that's a lot of energy. So you don't want to slam a ball valve closed. So we've got one of these butterfly valves that does that. When you've got that fully closed, it means this piece is isolated. So you can work on it if there's any maintenance or cleaning or something that needs to be done. And I, you know, I like to back flush them to make sure there's any debris in there that's clipped out. So you can see now it's still holding the pressure. This is at 50% vacuum. So that's basically five meters of head, is it? Negative head. Yep. So we are five meters above the river at the moment, okay? If we need to get in there to get to the non-return valve, which was in here, we can release these catches here. That's sucking itself on at the moment. If you hold on to that glass thing, I will let the air in, and it'll, and it'll, it'll bump, dump water on your gumboot, so watch out. <laughs> there you go. So there's the non-return valve. Because the valve is closed down there, I can do this now and let air in, and that valve will open, so I'll show you. So that will suck a bit, but the, only because the valve's closed. So you'll hear it suck. And now this valve will be loose, because it's the same pressure on both sides, see? So this is very, very light. It's just a fraction heavier than water. So when the flow is, it lifts right up here, right out of the way. We'll start that story again, shall we? So that'll take a few minutes. Uh, this pipeline, I said, is about 5,000 litres, and it's at peaking at five metres of head. And this, for this, if it's completely empty, and I start all over again, if I start all over again, this will take about an hour to prime that 5,000 litre line. Oh, okay. Under your current water pressure. Yep, under my current water pressure. So it actually states from, it cycles in here, every 28 seconds, roughly, depending on the water pressure, it cycles from being in vacuum, atmospheric pressure, and then underwater pressure. Yeah. So it's going through three states, liquid and gas. So it's, that's why it's um, uh, been tricky to, to finalise the design that doesn't have any electronic or industrial components to operate. It's fully operated by uh, natural forces.